As a business owner, you know how to do what you went into business to do, whether it's run a restaurant, be a dentist, be a lawyer, be a service provider, fix people's homes, whatever it may be. No one ever actually told you that part of being in business is that you have to do all of your own marketing as well. And until you have a budget to get an agency or a team to help you execute your social media needs, you need to spend some time figuring out what it is that you need to do with social media and how it works. So in this video, I'm going to break down social media marketing for you as a beginner. Hi, my name is Desiree, and if you're looking to grow your business with better social media and content marketing, take action now, hit that subscribe button and the bell below. Now, the secrets to anything in social media starts with a good content plan, which is something we talk about a little bit later in this video. So to get you ready, make sure you go grab my free content planning worksheet that I have for you down in the description that's going to make everything that you do in social media purposeful and intentional, which we'll talk about when we get to the planning portion of this video. So what exactly is social media? Now, obviously, you know what Facebook is, Instagram and Twitter, like you've heard these like words, but what is social media? Social media is a website or an app that allows for you to create, share, and interact with people and brands through the internet, through the apps very specifically. Now, each app has its own way of doing things, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Either way, the social network is there to create, share, and interact with so that you're able to build digital relationships with people. Like that's what it's there to do. And as a business owner, this is really important for you since you're able to have a way to share what's happening in your business, information that's important, news and all these other things about your business that you normally would have to like painstakingly email or contact people about having one platform to share and create and engage is going to make everything easy for you and streamline that process. So let's give you an example that you might understand. You're an insurance agent. Every year, new things happen in the insurance world and policies change and prices go up or down and things just are generally on an annual basis, mix things up and require you to have new information to share with your customers. So you decided to create a Facebook page to share your information with your potential and current customers. So you decided like, look, there are so many different things that I need to explain to people. I am going to either do one of two things. One, make a post about every specific thing and maybe translate it into English so they can understand exactly what's going on in the industry and what changes are and how they're going to affect them. Or two, you're going to go live on Facebook and just have a conversation talking it out with people so they know what's going on and that way they can update any policies that they need and, and whatever else that goes into it. So that is how you can use social media to engage and share with your customers. And in turn, whatever you're posting, they're gonna comment on and ask questions and hopefully reach out to you directly with more information, more questions, and of course, business. Now I get asked a lot why. Tell me why. Why do I need to be on social media? Well, there's a lot of different reasons as to why social media is important. I actually have a whole video that you can watch in the cards right now. But I think the biggest thing for you to remember that social media is how people are going to know you are relevant, that you are current, and that you are in business. We all, for the most part, know that you should have a website in place for your business. But I also know a ton of businesses that will have a Facebook business page and not a website. So this kind of can tell you how easy it is to create and get started and show people, hey, I exist. This business is here. How can I help you? A lot of people nowadays will go to the internet to Google very specifically and search for things, trying to get answers to stuff or to find something. Once they search you and you're like, okay, yeah, I like them, they're in my area, cool. I'm gonna go to social media and see about them, if they're in business, what people are saying, all the jazz. And so if they head over to Facebook or Instagram or something, and you're not there, they're gonna think you're not in business because you're like, what do you have to hide? Why aren't you sharing what's going on? Or, or maybe you have a page or something and you haven't posted in a really long time. You're not gonna be relevant to them. They're gonna think that you don't exist and therefore they're going to move on to your competitor. So it's really important to make sure that you have a presence on social media so you can keep your lights on and have a way to tell people who you are and what you're about. Now with social media, there are a lot of platforms that you have to choose from. So how are you supposed to know which one is right for you? Well, this is actually gonna go into knowing your customer really well. So if you know exactly who you're supposed to be talking to for your business. So the information that you probably already know about your customers is like their age, where they live, what their needs are, what their interests are, and if they're willing to give you money. And by knowing the information, you're gonna be able to pick the right platform that your people are spending the most time on. Every demographic has a preferred social network. Traditionally, your younger demographics gonna be really into TikTok, your 25s to 40s issues are gonna be very into Instagram, and your 35s on up are gonna be really into Facebook. So it's really important for you to know what platform to get onto based on the demographic you're trying to serve. I also think it's very important to mention there's a very big difference between social media and search. 
All right, a lot of people will lump everything into like one big thing. So they're like, okay, Facebook, Instagram, and also YouTube and Pinterest and stuff. No, it doesn't work that way. There are two very separate ways that these two things exist. So over here on search is where we have like our YouTubes and we have our Pinterest, we have our Google. These are those social networks because people go to them to search for information and get answers. Over here though on social, this is where we have our Facebook, our LinkedIn's, our Instagram's, our Twitter's. This is where the socializing is happening. So don't confuse these two. I create content on YouTube based on the needs that people are searching for, but where I socialize is over on Instagram because that's where I know my demographic likes to spend time. So that is how you use it. I don't want you to confuse them, but I want to take that moment to clarify so you can make sure to pick the right platform for you to socialize on. Now, once you have picked the platform, you need to dive headfirst into everything about that platform. <laughs> You need to know about like how to use it, what you should be doing, how to get your page name, and all the ins and outs of that specific social network. Now this video is part of a series about social media for beginners, and I'm gonna have other videos that break down all the different platforms. You can get the links to those down in the description or we'll stay to the end and click the card for the different social networks that these are gonna be happening for. But it's important for you to spend time studying what the social network does how people are creating on it, and how you can do it as well. It's really important to make sure that you learn how to use this network and you become really comfortable with it. A lot of people will say that you should pick a platform that you are comfortable with, but the platform that you are comfortable with might not be the one that your customers are actually on. So really think about it before you solidify on which platform is going to be your, your starter, your leader, for what you're going to do and create. Next, we're gonna dive into claim and complete. I want you to claim your name, your username on the desired social platform. You check to see if it's available by going to the name of the social network. So like in this case, let's say Facebook, facebook.com forward slash and the name of your business. Like how are people gonna find you? In my case, everything is under Mrs. Desiree Rose. So facebook.com forward slash Mrs. Desiree Rose or at Mrs. Desiree Rose everywhere on the internet takes you to my social networks. You need to very clearly claim what yours should be. It should not be business XYZ or whatever simplify it is. Find a way to take your company name or maybe like a purpose statement or a simplification of your company name and make that your username. It's part of claiming who you are. Put the name in the business and complete the profile. Completing your profile is gonna be very important again to establish your brand and your presence is very important. So some of the things you're gonna to need to do is have a really good cover image or have a really good profile image. You're gonna to have to complete the profile, but like when you're open, what you're about, what you do, when you got started, what your hours are, every little detail that's in there, you need to complete it and fill it out. You wanna make sure that you also have a really clear like tag or hook or bio so that people come to your page, they know who you are and what you're about and what you have to offer them. Now you can get really deep with this actually. There's a lot of different options depending on what kind of business you have or what kind of page or whatever you set up. There are shopping options, about options, and so much more. So really think through and take the time to complete that profile to the best of your ability. Once you complete the profile, you're gonna be able to do a lot of really good things with it. And what's nice is when you work on that profile, you really only have to do it one time. Now that you've picked your platform, spend time on that platform researching your competitors and also getting inspired by other accounts. By researching your competitors, you're going to be able to see like what is it that, that they're creating, that they're doing, that they're saying that is working for them or not working for them so that you can draw inspiration from their content, whether it's videos, photos, images, messaging, hashtags, whatever it may be, knowing what your competitors are doing is gonna help you be better. There's a saying online that no one actually has competitors online. We just have people that inspire us. So try and approach it that way um, and, and not blatantly steal, of course, what they have going on, but get inspiration from what they're doing. I also encourage you to follow just like other brands, like brands and people that you just like and see what they're creating because oftentimes they could be creating something that's really cool that you could also get inspiration from and mimic in some way, shape or form. Because if you're just focusing on your industry, you can get stale and that is not what you want when it comes to social. So now that you have inspiration, you know what your purpose is, now we need to put together the plan that we talked about at the beginning of this video. By having a plan, you're gonna be able to very clearly define all the different steps of what you need to do with your content. So this is gonna come down into a couple of different parts. I'm a firm believer that every single thing that you post online needs to have a goal. There has to be a purpose for what you're posting. Now the purpose does not always have to be sales. Sometimes it can be email opt-ins or it can be views or interactions or engagements. Whatever that may be, set a goal for what you're trying to accomplish with your post 
And once you have that goal, you can create content to support it. Always make sure to spend a significant amount of time making sure your post works really well. You need to have story driven content that's engaging straight out the gate. Those first 115 characters are vital to the success of anything that you post on social. Now that you've created your message, you know what your goal is, you have your content all together, now we need to schedule it out. So the whole point of creating everything and being all together on social media is so that you can stay consistent and be present. Nothing is more important to your audience and to the algorithm of the platform, which is what makes it work and decides like who sees what on your, on your newsfeed, than being consistent. Every single social network will tell you consistency is vital to your success. So that's why it's really helpful to schedule. I have a lot of tutorials on this channel that show you how to schedule content to the very specific platforms. And you also can check out my favorite third-party content management tool, Sendable, which will show you how to schedule things out for all the different social networks in one go. Whatever it is that you choose, make sure you take all the great content you created and schedule it out so it never misses a beat. Now that you've been posting and you have things going up, you need to make sure that whatever you're doing is working for you. And if you want to make sure something is working for you, you need to make sure that you're setting the analytics. Analytics are going to tell you everything that you need to know to make sure your content is working for you. It's also going to provide you all the other things that you need to know, like time to post and, and demographic information. And is this working? Or maybe if you've done this on a different day, it could have done better. Study the analytics that's provided by each platform so that you know what is working best so that you can keep replicating it and you can stop doing things that aren't working for you. And one of the quickest and easiest and bestest way, in my opinion, to grow on social media and really get the true value of what social media has to offer is for you to engage and do outreach. So engagement, a lot of people will clearly try and tell you this is when people are commenting or saying things, that's when you comment back. And then, yes, that is very, very important. But the other part of engagement is outreach. It's finding the people. It's you spending time on the platform finding people to have those conversations with. If you want to be able to have true success and true growth, you have to spend time doing that. If you are not going to figure out who to talk to and who is interested in your brand, you're going to end up very still. And engagement is one of those very important measurements when it comes to everything that you're doing on social. Now, like I said, this is a series where I'm going to break down for you what to do on the specific platform. So watch this video I have for you right here, which is the next video in the series to help you on your path to social media marketing success as a beginner. And watch this video right here because YouTube thinks that you're really going to like it. And until next time, I'll see you soon. For your business, and this is going to be the platform on this, on social media, Facebook, Instagram, wherever they may be.